Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do another video for you today about my cult Peacemaker. Um, now I've done a few videos about this already and people seem relatively interested so I thought I'd do another one. Um, and the one I want to talk about is this one which is the BB version, the first one I got, the first one I showed you. Um, and you know, obviously I've now got the pellet version um, and I've also got the, uh, the nickel BB version for the misses as well. Um, but really, yeah, this is the one I want to talk about but it will sort of overlap onto a few of the others. Um, and first and foremost, what I wanted to talk about was pellet in BB and BB in pellet and so on and so forth. Because it was a question I asked a while back and a few people answered and I've spoken to people since. Um, and the question I had was, can you interchange, if I just get one out quickly, I'll bring it a bit closer to the camera for you. So these are the brass cartridges that come with the BB version. Um, and they're basically a brass tube tapered at one end, um, and you've got a little, hopefully you can see that all right there, you've got a little rubber seal in there. Um, and what you're supposed to do is just poke the BB in there, load it into the pistol um, as so, and then you're good to go. Um, and when I bought my pellet version, um, it came with a slightly different shell. It came with a, a sort of a stainless steel coloured shell. Um, now I asked my, uh, my gun dealer and I also asked Umarex, uh, the manufacturer, directly. I said, are these shells interchangeable? Because when I had them both side by side, they both looked identical. Um, and I was told by both of them, absolutely not. One is for BBs only and the other one is for pellets only. Um, and I ummed and I ahed and I googled it a bit um, and I said, you know what, I'm going to take the risk. Um, so I started putting um, the brass shells into my pellet version uh, with pellets in them and it worked fine. Um, and you know, this, this is not a recommendation by any means, um, you know, and the manufacturer does state very clearly you shouldn't do it, um, but I decided to do it anyway um, and it worked fine. So I then got thinking, hang on a minute, so I wouldn't put a steel BB down a rifled barrel because it can easily chew up the rifling, so you know, it, won't, it won't be doing that. But what, you know, could I possibly put a lead pellet down a smoothbore barrel? Um, now I've shot smoothbore pellet guns in the past with, with no issue. Um, so that's basically what I've been doing. I've been taking this pistol, which is a, designed as a BB pistol with a smoothbore barrel, um, and I've been loading the brass cartridges that are supposedly just for BBs into, um, with pellets, um, and I've been firing pellets out of this smoothbore pistol. Um, and two things um, have come to light very, very quickly. Um, one is that there's been no problem doing so. It hasn't caused any problems, at least not yet, and I've been doing it for about a month now. Um, but secondly, the pellets through the smoothbore barrel are a lot more accurate than the BBs. Now that's not really a surprise due to the, 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 the shape and, and the way pellets are fired, even if they're not going through a rifled barrel. Um, so if anyone is thinking about getting one of these, and again, as I say, the, you know, just to cover myself, this is not a recommendation, just an observation. I have found that putting pellets in the BB version of this pistol works really, really well. Um, now there's another thing that I've found that, that maybe it's a nice little tip or a hint for people. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera just a bit closer in just to show you this. Right, so the next thing I wanted to show you was loading this pistol. Now obviously what you're supposed to do is take out your shell, take your pellet or BB or whatever it is you're using, you poke it into the back like so, and then you load it back into the pistol, which is fine. And then you obviously put it back to safe mode, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, I actually bought a whole load. I think I've got like something like 24 cartridges, um, which I, you know, I can then load them all up and then just fire six, check, eject them all out, put another six in, and that's fine. There's no problem with that. However, I've actually found a slightly quicker way, and it really depends on whether or not you want to be as realistic as possible or whether you just want to shoot as much as you possibly can. Um, and that is this, so you half cock the weapon, open the loading gate, come round to an empty cartridge, take your pellet or BB, and this does work with both, but pellets are slightly easier I must admit, but BBs do work, and then you just poke it in. Twist your uh, cylinder round, grab another pellet without dropping it, slot it in, move the chamber and so on and so on and so forth 
until you're fully loaded. And I'll do that quickly now. now you do find things like this happen, um, and that's because I'm trying to do this on camera so you can see it. Um, but essentially, normally I'd be pointing this straight down because it just makes everything slightly easier. Um, but actually, the pellets tend to find their seat really easily in here. And I okay, go last one, get it the right way around. That's the last one anyway. So we're now fully loaded in here. Let me just move this around so you can see it a bit better. Um, and I'm you know, doing this when I'm not trying to film it, I found this is slightly quicker than trying to eject all the cartridges and then put new cartridges in. Now I wanted the spare cartridges anyway, because um, I am speaking to someone about getting a proper gun belt made up with bullet loops on the back, and I, I just really want them all in there. Uh, but if I'm out shooting for any considerable length of time, um, I actually really like the fact that I can just keep reloading with the same set of cylinders without uh, same set of shells sorry in the cylinder without having to take everything out right now the last thing I wanted to show you guys was my little indoor range now obviously you've seen my video previously where I've opened up my little curtain or tarp that's normally my background um, and where I'm going to be standing in a second is exactly 15 feet from that target and um, now the target just behind me uh, where are we here um, is just a square of mild steel. It's 200 by 200 millimeters uh, in size, um, and basically, um, it, I found it is a really, really good um, target for lead pellets. Now, obviously, you can't use this with steel BBs because they'll ricochet. Um, but I was playing around with this little bit of trial and error, um, and not only does the pellet just hit it, flatten, and drop. Um, but it also makes a real audible clang so you know that you've hit the target. Um, now one of the reasons I was doing that is for fast draw. Um, I'm really not very good at it and I'm not going to be showing you any of that today. But the idea being is you kind of stand there in your you know, blasé gunfighter's stance um, and you will draw and cock and fire as quickly as possible. Um, to hit your target. Now what I was finding is I was having to put up a brand new target every single time um, so that I wasn't mistaking one hole for another to see where I'd hit. But by having this piece of steel um, it actually means that I can um, audibly hear every time I've made a hit which is great for me. I mean it's a really short distance especially for firing pellets you know something like 15 or 20 feet for a BB gun is fine um, you know, I usually probably go a bit further out for pellets, even in a pistol. Um, but it's the space that I've got. Um, you know, it's out of, out of the way of prying eyes. I don't often shoot in my back garden because I'm overlooked by a number of places, um, and I really just don't want anybody knocking on the door after having a phone call. Um, what I thought I'd do is I'm just going to sort of fire off six shots into this steel target, uh, just to a show you that you know we don't we're not getting any ricochets, and b so you can hear that kind of positive clang so that we know we've made it made a hit. So there you go guys, I mean again, you know, it's nothing special, um, but if you are thinking about setting something like this up yourself, um, you know, it's a really, really nice way of doing it. Um, you know, if you're limited for space and you've got a little area like this, um, or maybe, you know, even in your garden, um, you know, it, as long as you've got a decent backstop and there's no risk of the pellets straying out anywhere, it's a really, really nice thing to have. Um, I've been really enjoying it. As I say, if I do get any better and I kind of pick up on my fast draw, um, you know, a little bit better, I'll probably give you a demonstration of that. Maybe I'll use the GoPro at some point and do a little bit of... Um, you know, um, slow-mo footage and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so really guys, that was it. Just a few of my little um, comments and, and, and things that I've found using this and, and the other two. This all translates to, to all three of these, these uh, peacemakers that I have. Um, and you know, I'm really, really enjoying them. So I hope it was useful. I mean, please do uh, you know, leave comments or questions down in the box below. If you want to have a chat about these, anything you want to know, let me know. Um, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.